It is almost 12.29. Any minute now, the big reveal. The crowd is big, ready to go. You just watched footage captured by journalist Steve Monticelli in November of 2021, and that large crowd that you saw was comprised of QAnon cult followers who gathered in Dallas, Texas to witness the return of JFK Jr., who would then announce a joint 2024 presidential run with Donald Trump and reveal that he's been alive this whole time. However, he never showed up because to the chagrin of these idiots, he actually did die all the way back in 1999. But the individual responsible for that particular lie is QAnon leader Michael Protzman. And as Vice News reports, when his prophecy didn't happen, Protzman's conspiracy simply changed. And over the next 18 months, he would alter and change his predictions to suit his needs and keep his followers on board. Ultimately, he claimed that he was in direct contact with former President Donald Trump and that Trump was, in fact, JFK Jr. in disguise. Sounds legit. Now, that individual, Michael Protzman, who spread that lie and continued to lie, died. Vaccine? Uh, no, but seriously, he died. He died on June 30th in a motocross accident, and his followers are taking it about as well as you'd expect. Vice News reports Shelly Mullinex, who was one of Protzman's earliest followers but had a falling out with him and other members of the group last year, remains convinced of the conspiracies Protzman concocted about JFK. She believes his death is all part of the plan. If that was the plan that God had for him, I know that everything is going to be revealed soon, Molnitz told Vice News on Wednesday. Molnitz said that in recent days, someone in her group claimed Protzman was taken out, but she dismissed that. She doesn't want any conspiracy theories, folks. Uh, she did, however, claim that the person who died was in fact one version of Michael Protzman, the evil version, and that the good Michael Protzman, who is in fact JFK Jr. in a mask, is still alive and well. Holy shit. Vice News spoke to several family members of Protzman's followers and all said that their loved ones have dismissed the news of Protzman's death as fake. In another Telegram channel populated with Protzman's followers, one admin wrote that they would be removing all posts regarding his death until we have absolute verification. Yeah. So as you can see, they had some very normal reactions to his death. Now, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but um, here's your verification. It's the death certificate. He's gone. Don't shoot the messenger. He died. It's real. Now, I know that they're just going to say it's fake, but perhaps maybe that will give some of them some closure. But the reason why we're talking about this is not to discuss Protzman or his legacy, but really what happened after he died. And it's only been a little more than a month, but his death created this power vacuum, and one individual stepped up and tried to encourage his followers to follow them instead. But it doesn't necessarily seem like they are taking to that particular person. But unbeknownst to a lot of these individuals who want to be the new leader, well, before his death, he actually trained a successor. And that individual has since stepped up to take his place and his new followers or his old followers, I should say, have been receptive to this new leader. And that's troubling because this new leader is literally a 13 year old girl named Tiny Teflon. And as Vice News reports, according to multiple live chats on Telegram reviewed by Vice News, Protzman appears to have groomed the girl as his protege, hosting her on his live chats on Telegram, where he had tens of thousands of followers. As a sign of her growing position within the group, Tiny Teflon was made an administrator of Protzman's main Telegram channel, though she posted very little over the last six months. However, since his death, the teenager has reemerged as a leading voice in the group. In late July, she showed up at a Trump rally in Erie, Pennsylvania, where she was photographed with multiple members of the JFK group. Then she began to post again in the Negative 48 channel, as well as posting her decodes on August 1st. She shared a link to her new channel called ABC123. The channel's description says it will contain tiny Teflon's decodes, research, and much more. And in all caps, adds channel monitored by adult. The description doesn't mention who the adult is, but it is likely her mother, a Protzman devotee who 
has an account on Telegram as Teflon Dawn. Using this account, she has promoted her daughter's work as well as celebrating her birthday with a message posted in the main Negative 48 channel last year. During one live chat, Tiny Teflon went into more detail about how she would use her position to recruit more children into the cult. Great. Now, we're going to pause right there because... It's one thing to make fun of the adults who believe this silly conspiracy, but when I see a child engage in this and participate in this, I just feel profound sadness for them. This 13-year-old girl is absolutely blameless, but her mother should feel terrible for brainwashing her daughter into this unhinged political cult, but she doesn't view it that way, right? As outsiders, we can see that this is her brainwashing her child and getting her to participate in a cult, but she sees this as her daughter just being brought into what she believes is the truth and the truest thing that she's ever encountered. And what makes matters even worse is that the adults who followed Protzman, as I referenced earlier, well, they're now following this child and they're encouraging her to be the new QAnon leader in place of Protzman. Vice continues, at the end of the chat, one of the listeners effusely praised Tiny Teflon, quote, I think you inspire many, many adults and children, so thank you very much. We appreciate you, love you so much, said one. Another added, it was a pleasure listening to you, and I hope my little girl can start listening to you and go from there. One listener responded to Tiny's plan about including more children, saying, I think that's awesome because my daughter will be watching you, so I'm sure we'll be following you. Seconds later, her daughter also spoke on the live chat thank you you did so good stuff and i definitely can't wait to hear more of you the girl said yeah so this is fucked up on so many levels i mean these kids are going to deal with lifelong trauma when they inevitably escape this cult and i feel really bad for them and i also feel bad for the family members of these cult members because this cult has ruined lives. Like as much as we make fun of the QAnon adherents and talk about how silly the things that they believe are, the sad part is that the people around them, I mean, they've been abandoned, right? These people abandoned their families. They've emptied out their bank accounts all in pursuit of this cult. And now they are following a literal child in pursuit of what they believe to be the truth, where they look at movies and pop culture and they try to decode it to get messages and create these prophecies. It's just... It's bizarre, but it's not a new phenomenon, and QAnon has been around since 2017. But Vice researcher David Gilbert explains how their popularity exploded, and spoiler alert, the pandemic had a lot to do with it. Everyone gets to be the hero, decoding all the new Q drops and comparing notes with their new Q friends. It kind of creates this community effect among believers. Uh, and that's why the pandemic was so key is because people were stuck at home, they couldn't meet people. So they were on Facebook meeting in all these groups of like-minded people and they felt, oh, QAnon is this community and they all solved the clues together and you know, they're in on a secret that no one else knows about. It sort of reminds me of like the Da Vinci Code or National Treasure or these adventure movies where protagonists are able to see beyond I guess the like veil of reality to see clues and piece together something that everyone else wants to suppress. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's how it has been structured by whoever is behind it, because they know that people are, you know, people want, I guess, excitement in their lives for want of a better word. So if they think that they're seeing beyond like what everyone else is seeing, that's exciting. They're in on the secret. So when you combine the thrill of discovering the truth with a real sense of community and you start to make friendships, then, I mean, you understand why Q cultists become so entrenched in this cult. It's like they're solving puzzles together or doing some sort of an escape room together, right? So it's sad and it's still going on, right? It doesn't matter that prophecy after prophecy did not come to fruition. They still believe it. Right, because this has become a lifestyle to them. And so it doesn't matter if somebody makes a prediction based on the things that they've decoded and that doesn't bear out. What matters is that this is giving them a sense of identity and purpose. And because of that, it makes it that that much more difficult to want to leave in the first place. Because if this is all you have, if you've driven away your family and this is your life, then you really have no incentive to leave. And it's just you're kind of stuck in this hole that you've dug for yourself and getting out is impossible and you don't want to get out. So, I mean, yeah, what else can you say? QAnon is still around 
and at least one prominent subsection of this cult is now led by a 13-year-old child. Lord help us. Like everywhere there's glow, mama. you see them all the time. I mean, it's constant. Mama. My children are like, Mama, glow, 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 glow. I turn on mama. TV, there's glow in the background. Every TV show, news media, why? Glow, 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 They're everywhere. Glow, 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 glow,